share my screen. Okay. Um, go away. Here we are. Okay. Okay, so what we talked about uh, last time was the concept of how muscles use energy in what order. So we started with ATP. We start with ATP for a second, then creatine phosphate, then storing glycogen and cell respiration and lactic acid fermentation. And review that we use ATP in about a second, creatine phosphate second for about 20 seconds. Then if we don't have enough oxygen, we do lactic acid fermentation. And I wanted to talk about this uh, graph quick a second. Um, you see that this line is muscle performance right here. Okay, here's the ATP. You use ATP and you're burning through it. That's why this line is going down. You're using all the ATP. Creatine phosphate production spikes and drops. This line represents the lactic acid system. And eventually, once you've gone through all those, what you have left is how far you can go using your what's called the aerobic system with oxygen. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, and that's where we ended last time. Well, last time, then we talked about the anaerobic threshold. Just a minute. Let me, uh, oops. Let me um, turn off my thing a second. So, uh, the anaerobic threshold. And I wanted to see before we go any farther if there are any questions about that stuff. Okay. So moving on then. Um, if you take a look at this next graph, I think you'll see something kind of interesting. Um, the experiment that was done here, I'm not going to ask you to write this down. I'm not going to ask you to write this down or write down the graph or anything, but you should understand what's happening here is that what they did is they took three different people and they put them on a treadmill at 11 kilometers an hour for 15 minutes at 12 kilometers an hour for 30 minutes and at 13 kilometers an hour, for 45 minutes or for 15, sorry, for 15 more minutes. You wouldn't even realize that you're actually moving much faster. That's the thing. Like one kilometer an hour is very much a very little difference, but look at what happens in the amount of lactic acid use in, in athlete two and the amount of lactic acid production, so much more, this is actually a measure of fatigue, right? The amount of lactic acid that's being produced is a measure of fatigue. So this person, just by driving it up a little bit, and you're like, well, why did they pick 11, 12, and 13? Well, remember from last time that 11.8 was the anaerobic threshold for the person they were testing. So they stick three people on, and notice at 11 that they have a little bit of a jump here of the amount of lactic acid in their blood, but it really takes off an athlete two, whereas athlete one and athlete three kind of muddle along, really don't gain very much at all. And so we would say then that athlete three must be the most fit. They must be the one who have the best fitness because they don't get as much lactic acid in their blood. Therefore, they are, they have less fatigue. Does this make sense? If you have a question, don't put it in the chat because I won't see it. You're going to have to like just talk or say something and then I'll come back and check. So what I want to talk about is how do we get fit, right? And we're going to talk about training first. And then we're going to talk about what actually physically happens inside of your muscles to, to be more fit. Okay, so first of all, training. There are two kinds of training. The first kind of training is called anaerobic training. Anaerobic training. And uh, I don't know if you know what this phrase actually means. 
It literally means without and without aerobic oxygen. You're like, wait, is this like training with a mask on? No, although it will feel like it. If you start playing basketball with a mask on, that probably will feel like anaerobic without oxygen. We're talking about these kinds of training. We're talking about short, less than two minutes, high intensity workouts, not rockouts. Oops, workouts. Things like power lifting, where you're where you're where you're bench pressing as much weight as you possibly can, sprinting. Okay, where you just sprinting is an anaerobic training. Basketball is anaerobic training. Fartleks. Fartleks, if you don't know what this is, this is a Norwegian name for when you sprint, jog, sprint, jog, sprint. So you sprint 100 meters, jog 50 meters, sprint 100 meters, jog 50 meters. The, that is anaerobic training. And what is it doing? It's getting you above your anaerobic threshold. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. You are training at a level where you're over that anaerobic threshold. Your body, your, your, your heart and lungs can't keep up with the amount of oxygen you need. So you use fermentation exclusively. You're producing lactic acid. You, you, are, you, are, um, you are doing fermentation and you're like, well, wait a minute. It can't be just that you had to use it. Yes, use ATP and creatine first, but after 30 seconds, you can't keep up with the oxygen demand. So you are doing fermentation. And so what happens when you do that? While your body reacts, your body reacts to the cut, you're like, your, your muscles and your brain is like, whoa, I am not getting enough energy. I am producing all this lactic acid and the buildup of lactic acid stimulates the production of mitochondria and in your muscles. So remember that muscles have many mitochondria inside of a cell. So what literally happens when you start training this way is you increase the amount of mitochondria in your muscles. Because if you increase the amount of mitochondria, now you can increase the amount of ATP you can produce and do less lactic acid fermentation. You also get an increase in the enzymes that break down lactic acid. The quicker you break lactic acid down, the more energy you get out of that. The better it is, your muscles will recover faster. You get an increase in stored sugar. Remember we said that your muscles uh, store glycogen. So if you have more mitochondria, remember, remember that glycogen is, is a bunch of glucose molecules put together, I'm writing at the top now. So remember that mitochondria break down glucose for energy. So if you have more of these, you need more of this. You store more glycogen in your muscles. I'm gonna leave it on this slide for a second unless I can go, you tell me when. Or are you good or you want me to wait a minute? I'll give it like 30 seconds. Okay, can I go on? Is anybody there? Okay, I can't see you when I'm doing this, so yeah. Okay, I'll go on. Aerobic training.
So aerobic training is long, low intensity training. Something like distance jogging, circuit training with weights where you're doing light weights, high reps, light weights, long bike rides, a long walk. Uh, this is aerobic training where you're below your anaerobic threshold. Generally, it's pretty hard to stay below all the time. I spell threshold wrong, sorry. It's hard to stay below the threshold all the time. Okay, it's, it's a difficult proposition. You're gonna go above and below, but you're staying kind of right around it. And the whole point of aerobic training, when I say increase the cardiovascular output, is you are training your cardiac muscle. You're training your heart. Okay, you get your heart rate, your heart rate will increase, but not to the point where it's coming out of your chest, you're jogging along and your heart rate's elevated a bit. And what that's doing is it's increasing the ability of your heart to pump blood. It gets literally stronger. You are training your heart muscle. So that results in an increase in the body's ability to bring oxygen to your muscles. Okay, so if the, if the heart is pumping better, more efficiently, more blood per pump, you're going to get more oxygen to your muscles. It's aerobic training. So there are two kinds of training that you try to always do. You try to always train anaerobically and you try to always train a little bit aerobically. This is why distance runners should train, should, should sprint. And we'll come back to that in a bit. Distance runners should use a little bit of sprinting. Sprinters should do a little bit of distance. Okay, not a lot, as we'll see. Like, well, don't give me, if your track coach tells you you should, then you should. Okay, don't, don't, I'm not a track coach. Far from it. However, this, the, the, the science of it is, is that you train both to be the best fit, right? Get your heart trained the best, get your muscles trained the best to be the best uh, in shape you can be. Can I go to the next slide? Yes. Okay, so what is fitness exactly? And let's tie it all together. Look at Haley here, she is very fit. She had, her muscles are very strong, obviously. Is this person, this person looks fit. Okay, they're also wearing a leopard skin dress, but that's another, uh, I don't know if it's leopard skin, whatever that is, black and gold, I don't know. More muscle mitochondria. I'm kind of summarizing it. Okay, we're, we're summarizing now. More storage of ATP, more storage of creatine, more storage of glycogen, more blood vessels per volume of muscle. Now, this is a little bit interesting. You'll notice that in her arms here, she has this very uh, she has this high, you see these blood vessels all kind of sticking out and bulging. That is because there's more blood vessels, okay? To feed these muscles, she actually has more blood vessels. Your body grows more. Uh, one of the reactions of less oxygen is to grow more blood vessels. And of course, we'll talk about this later, what happens in your heart and lungs to make it you more fit. Okay, the fitness of your heart, we're going to talk to you next semester when we talk or talk about we talk about cardiac uh, muscle and in, in your heart and how it works. So when you're in better shape, so if, if uh, Haley here quits lifting all the time and starts playing basketball, her, her legs will start storing more mitochondria, her legs will have more mitochondria in them. 
the more ability to store ATP, more ability to store creatine, more glycogen, and all of that leads to you needing less oxygen at a time. Your heart pumps better. You can go longer. Are there any questions about that? Would you like to see what that person really looks like that I put Haley's face over? You're going to see why I put Haley's face over them. I think I have to go to. Let me see if I can do it in here. I don't think I can. I have to end the show. And now let me... Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to put you guys on the share screen. Wow. Pretty sure those aren't her. That's not her real eye color. Pretty sure. I don't know. A little creepy. Okay, last thing, then we'll talk about questions. You see that her muscles kind of stand out right now. I know she's flexing, but this is kind of just more of a review than anything. And I was looking around the internet and I found my picture. Now, I don't know where these people get these pictures of me from, but what this really does show here is, this, is, is muscle tone, okay? Muscle tone, you see that my muscles stand out, right? And it's not like I'm like flexing all the time. It's because two things. Number one, I and, well, the person that I made look like Haley, we trained to remove the fat from over our muscles. So to look like this, you have to get the fat off of your muscles. In other words, remember it goes skin, fat, muscle. So I trained a lot to remove the fat. So the fat is off. So I do a lot of aerobic and anaerobic training to get the fat away so that you can see the muscles. And notice this person isn't really flexing all the time because their muscles are in a state of continuous contraction. If you're standing up, moving around, you're mu you have this thing called muscle tone. It's sort of like tetanus where the muscles are always contracted. True story. Last hour, I accidentally didn't share the screen and I was on like the small version like this. And all the girls are like, hey, Mr. Van Kempen, could you switch that back to the full screen, please? And I just started laughing. Mm -hmm. Thought it was funny. Maybe you don't. Oh, well. This has been a weird day because everybody just sits. I don't know. 